Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Peach Melba. That's right, this is only the second most famous recipe named after an opera singer with the last name Melba. The toast, of course, being the most famous, and both, by the way, invented by the world's first celebrity chef. Who is that? You'll have to read the blog post to find out. Okay, so step one, we're going to make a fresh raspberry sauce starring these fresh raspberries. So I have two of those little cartons. I think those are six ounces each. It's about three cups. To that, we're going to add some sugar, some freshly squeezed lemon juice, and then the secret ingredient, a couple drops of balsamic vinegar. Shh. No one's going to know it's there. We're not going to tell anybody. It will just freak people out. But a few drops will give it a certain something that you're really going to love. So if you're scared, don't put it in. But if you're scared, you really shouldn't be cooking to begin with. So put it in. Just a couple drops. Relax. I'm also going to give that a small splash of water. We're going to put that on medium heat. And we're basically just going to bring it up to a simmer. And it's not really going to look like much until it starts to heat up. But then those berries are going to collapse. The sugar is going to dissolve. And when it comes up to a simmer like that, I just want you to cook it for three minutes and then turn off the heat. And when that's done, the final step here, we're going to pass it through a fine strainer, which is going to catch all those little tiny annoying raspberry seeds. I love the raspberry, but you got to admit the seeds are annoying. So we're going to pass that through and all the liquid and puree is going to come through. Make sure you scrape the bottom of your strainer. That's all the good stuff. And there you go. That is one beautiful berry sauce. And while it has a little bit of thickness now, it's fairly thin but it will thicken up in the fridge a little bit. This is not supposed to be a really thick, sticky syrup. It's supposed to just be a pure liquid essence of fresh raspberries. All right, so I'm gonna wrap that and refrigerate it while we move on to our poached peaches, which we're gonna do in a simple syrup. So it's basically equal parts sugar and water. I'm gonna add some lemon juice. Looks like we had a couple small seeds there. That's all right, that'll happen. I'm also gonna add a vanilla bean. I just split that in half. You can see all those little things that look like tar. From the center those are the little tiny vanilla seeds those will all kind of separate as it warms up so all we're going to do is we're going to bring this syrup up to a simmer we're going to put that on medium heat and while that's happening we have a couple minutes we can prep our peaches which is super simple you're going to want to use peaches that are fairly firm all right they should be sweet and getting ripe but you want a little firmness to them they're just going to poach better all right cut around the stone twist you're going to get two halves and because you're using freestone peaches, not clingstone, freestone, those come right out. And those are generally the ones you're going to get in the market. But you can always ask your friendly produce person. We're going to go ahead and place in our peaches. And I generally do them skin side down first, although it really doesn't matter. I'm going to raise my heat up to just maintain kind of a steady simmer. It'll look like that. And then all you need to do is simmer these until tender. And the time is really going to depend on the ripeness. So these ended up taking about five minutes per side. And yes, you could use a smaller, different shaped saucepan, and those would be all submerged, but it really doesn't matter. So I let them go about five minutes. I flipped them over. I like to baste them once in a while. Seems like a good idea, and it's fun. So right here, I decided I was getting very close. I'm going to test it with a knife. That's perfect. Now what I like to do is just let them cool right in the syrup. You should probably do the same. The only reason I wouldn't let them cool in the syrup is if for whatever reason you think, hmm, these might be a little overcooked. Then it's probably best to get them out of that hot liquid. But for me, I let them cool down to room temperature right in that syrup. Then we can transfer them to a bowl, cover them with the syrup. Let's go ahead and add that vanilla bean in just for fun, and it looks good. I'm going to wrap that up, and I'm going to place that in the fridge alongside my raspberry sauce. I want both of those components ice cold. Do not eat this warm. So let's assume just this one time you actually listen to me and let all this stuff get nice and ice cold before you serve. When you pull it out, the skin should peel off. Now it doesn't always. Sometimes it just sticks to the fruit and you can't get it off. If that happens, don't be upset. It actually will look and taste great and probably be better for you. And then for final assembly, I want you to get a scoop of your finest vanilla bean ice cream. Place a peach half on top and then, oh yeah, slowly, not too fast. You wanna enjoy this. Slowly drizzle that raspberry sauce over your peach and you're gonna see one of the most beautiful colors in the history of the world. A fresh raspberry sauce over a beautiful golden peach. It's just amazing. I bet there's not even a name for that color. We're gonna finish with some toasted slivered almonds. And yes, this is a much easier dessert to eat if you cut the peaches up for people, but then you don't get that amazing presentation. So don't do it. And there you go. Peach Melba. 
In opera, they say it's not over till the fat lady sings, but you know what? All we have around here is a fat chef, and I'm not singing, but I will taste this. If you just dug into this and you were only eating that vanilla ice cream with that fresh homemade raspberry sauce, that would be an awesome dessert. But then when you also consider you have that poached peach in there, subtly scented with that lemon and that vanilla, it's just incredible. You gotta try this. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.